नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय नित्यानंद जय द्वैत चंद्र जय गौर भक्त वृंद रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्री चैतन्य चरितमृता मध्य लीला चैप्टर ट्वेंटी एंटाइटल्ड द लॉर्ड इंस्ट्रक्ट सनातन गोस्वामी रीडिंग फ्रॉम टेक्स्ट वन सेवेंटी सिक्स थ्रू वन एटी टेक्स्ट वन सेवेंटी सिक्स जे काले भुज नाना वैभ प्रकाश चतुर्भुज होले नाम प्रभव प्रकाश ट्रांसलेशन वेन द लॉर्ड इज टू हैंडेड ही इज कॉल्ड वैभव प्रकाश एंड वेन ही इज फोर हैंडेड ही इज कॉल्ड प्राभव प्रकाश टेक्स्ट वन In his original form the lord dresses like a cowherd boy and thinks himself one when he appears as vasudeva the son of vasudev and devaki his dress and consciousness are those of a kshatriya a warrior text 178 when one compares the beauty opulent sweetness and intellectual pastimes of vasudeva the warrior to krishna the cowherd boy son of nanda maharaj one sees that krishna's attributes are more pleasant text 179 indeed vasudeva is agitated just to see the sweetness of govinda and a transcendental greed awakens in him to enjoy that sweetness Text 180. My dear friend, this dramatic actor appears like a second form of my own self. Like a picture, he displays my pastimes as a cowherd boy, overflowing with wonderfully attractive sweetness and fragrance, which are so dear to the damsels of Raja. When I see such a display, my heart becomes greatly excited. I long for such pastimes. and desire a form exactly like that of the damsels of raja om gyanati mirandhasya gyananjana shalakaya chakshurun milita mena tasmay shri gurave namaha namo om vishnu padaya krishna prasthaya bhutale श्रीमते राधानाथ स्वामी की नाम नम ओम विष्णु प्रदाय कृष्ण प्रेष्ठाय भूतले श्रीमते जय पताक स्वामी की नाम नम आचार्य पदाय नाय कृपा कृपाई ने गौरकथा धाम दाय नगर ग्राम तारिणे नम ओम विष्णु प्रदाय कृष्ण प्रेष्ठाय भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी की नाम नमस्ते सारस्वती देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देश तारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गुरा हर्ष वासुदी गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो दिस चैप्टर श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य महाप्रभु इज इंस्ट्रक्टिंग श्री सनातन गोस्वामी पाद एंड the previous chapter was mahaprabhu's instructions to shri rupa goswami and this chapter he is instructing his elder brother and it's an entire journey of sanatan goswami that has been described in this complete chapter um how sanatan goswami was in the prison of the um you know nawab husain shah and then how he bribed the guards and he got out and then he came to the you know one uh in you know where the in owner tried to loot <clears throat> sanatan goswami and tried to harm sanatan goswami because he wanted to get those gold coins so like this and then finally how sanatan goswami came to varanasi to the house of chandrashekhar acharya and he finally met 
with Sriman Mahaprabhu. And Mahaprabhu was so pleased to see Shla Sanatan Goswami. And Sanatan Goswami, he is the author of one of our main book, one of the main books on Vaishnava Siddhanta. Most of our, you know, the do's and don'ts of devotional practices that have been um, written down. The, you know, importance of fasting, how should we perform different austerities, different austerities for different months, how should we render Chaturmasya Vrata, how should we render Damodar Vrata, how should we render Purushottam Adhika Masa Vrata, so all of these, the Bhishma Panchaka Vrata, so the, you know, the tenets of devotional service have been written down very, very systematically, categorically by Shri Sanatan Goswami Pad in his glorious work, in his glorious book called Shri Hari Bhakti Vilas. So Hari Bhakti Vilas is, is, um, is is a, is you know the book written by Sri Ch- Shila Sanatan Goswami Pad, and it is mainly um, you know although here we see that you know Mahaprabhu is talking about different aspects of himself, you know, like in the sense about you know difference between the um, the Chaturvyuha. Krishna, original personality of Godhead, Swayam Prakash, Ekatma Prakash, all of these categories of the Parampurush Bhagavan has been described here in detail in the last few verses. And But before that also, and even after this, Lord Chaitanya will be talking about um, you know, certain aspects of devotional service, practical aspects of devotional service. So Hari Bhakti Vilas is a compilation of these teachings of Shri of Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that Shri Sanatan Goswami Pad has uh, written down for all of us. So we are really very, very, extremely grateful to Shri Sanatan Goswami that apart from all the works, um, you know, Rupa Goswami has actually written many, many more literature, but Sanatan Goswami has written this one major literature, which is Shri Hari Bhakti Vilas, and of course. All the um, like text 180 that we read is um, actually a verse from Lalita Madhava, um, and you know so all these different books are um, you know were later compiled by Srila Rupa Goswami. And Rupa Goswami, he has written so many, so many different books, like Nectar of Devotion, Nectar of Instruction. All of these are written by Shri Rupa Goswami, but it was proofread. It was edited and proofread by Shri Sanatan Goswami. So because, you know, Sanatan Goswami is the elder brother of Shri Rupa Goswami, Rupa Goswami always gave a lot of respect, a lot of, you know, credit to Shri Sanatan Goswami um, for his own work as well. So Sanatan Goswami has a very glorious life. It is said that when after he meets with Mahaprabhu, at the end of this chapter we will see that how Mahaprabhu instructs Shri Sanatan Goswami to go to Vrindavan to join Rupa Goswami and to start writing books and establish deity worship. These are the instructions that Mahaprabhu gave to Rupa, and he will give to Sanatan the same thing. And <clears throat> so Sanatan Goswami, he, you know, he lived his life like a real Babaji. You know, he really was a very, 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 very amazing personality. And he was such a personality that he would actually do Govardhan Parikrama every single day. Shri Sanatan Goswami, he would do Giriraj Parikrama every single day without missing. And when he would do Parikrama, Sanatan Goswami was such a personality that everyone in Braj was able to relate to this personality. Starting from little kids 
to elderly, elderly people were able to tell their problems very, very freely, very openly to Srila Sanatan Goswami. That was the glory of Sanatan Goswami because he never saw anyone based on the body. He always saw everyone in relation to their eternal relationship with Krishna. So therefore, he could relate to everybody. Everybody would feel very, very comfortable talking to Srila Sanatan Goswami. And Sanatan Goswami was like the counselor for the entire bridge. Even if, you know, although Sanatan Goswami never married, he did not have children, of course. He did not have a wife. He was a renounced Babaji, you know, living alone by himself in Vrindavan. But when husband and wife would quarrel amongst each other, to settle their quarrel, they would come to Sanatan Goswami. And whatever Sanatan Goswami's verdict would be, the couple would accept it. That was how glorious Sanatan Goswami's uh, you know, speech was. That everybody would be so happy to just talk to Sanatan Goswami without feeling any kind of, uh, they would feel very, very comfortable to speak to Sanatan Goswami. They would be able to relate to Sanatan Goswami very, very amazingly. And every category of age of people in Brad, in fact, it is said that Shri Sanatan Goswami, he would, you know, sit down with the Braj Basis and say, Oh, come here, come here. He would call the Braj Basis and say, Oh, Lali ki shadi ho gai? You know, he would ask in Hindi like this, in Hindi Braj, he would ask that, Oh, your daughter got married? So how is her in-laws place? Are they treating her nicely? And then this Brajbasi would say, Ha ha, Sanatan Goswami, ye lala ki kripa se sab badhiya, sab badhiya, lala ki kripa se. So, by the mercy of lala means Krishna, everything is fine. Then Sanatan Goswami would ask, Phasal kaisa hoyo? You know, how was your crops, how did your crops come this year? And then the answer would be, oh, Lala ki kripa se, very nice, very nice. So all this would sometimes be misinterpreted by some unscrupulous people. They would, you know, criticize Sanatan Goswami, saying that, oh, why is Sanatan Goswami engaging in prajalpa, you know, talks that are not connected to Krishna? He would sometimes, you know, like some crazy people, in uh, Braj, you know, outside of Braj, who would just come, tourists and all that, when they would come, they would see a Babaji talking to another Brajbasi about their daughter's wedding. They would say, what kind of devotee Babaji is this? Why he is doing all this Prajalpa, you know, Phaltu talk, unnecessary talk, which is not related to Krishna? But Sanatan Goswami would then very laughingly respond to them by saying that these are Brajbasis. So there is nothing called Prajalpa in a Brajbasis dictionary. Because every sentence of a Brajbasi starts with Lala ki Kripase, means by the mercy of Krishna. Thakurji ki kripase, Lala ki kripase. So this is how a Brajbasi starts talking, that their talk is also starting with Krishna, ending with Krishna. So there is nothing called prajalpa in the vocabulary or the dictionary of a Brajbasi. That is how glorious the Brajbasis are. And that is why Sanatan every day would spend so much time discussing and conversing and just having a regular conversation with Brajbasis, interacting with them, having loving relationships with the Brajbasis like this. So Srila Sanatan Goswami, for you know him to be able to interact at this level with the Brajbasis, he needed to have this foundation that Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gives 
to Srila Sanatan Goswami in this particular chapter. The entire import of the Vedic knowledge was revealed to Srila Sanatan Goswami by Sriman Mahaprabhu. So that is the reason why by receiving this transcendental knowledge from Mahaprabhu, Sanatana Goswami was always in the, in the stage of Brahma Bhuta Prasannatma. He was always so blissful, so amazingly um, happy all the time. So, coming to the verses that we read today, text 176 is explaining, I mean in text 175, it explains that how, <clears throat> you know, there's an example of the Vaibhava Prakash of the Lord that has been given in the sense of saying that um, Vaibhava Prakash is just like the son of Devaki, that, you know, sometimes he has two hands and sometimes he has four hands. We all know that how when Krishna appeared to Mother Devaki, he appeared in the four-handed form of Lord Vishnu. And then he transformed himself into the two-handed baby form of Krishna. So here in text 176, it is saying that when the Lord is two-handed, he is called Vaibhava Prakash. And when the Lord manifests in his four-handed form, he is called as Prabhava Prakash. Prabhava Prakash. So, um, in the original form of Krishna, Original form of Krishna has already been established that Govindam Adi Purusham Tamaham Pajami. That the Adi Purush, the original form of Krishna is that of Shama Sundara, that of two handed form of Govinda, of Keshava. So this it is said in text 177 is saying that in the original form, the Lord dresses like a cowherd boy and he thinks of himself as one cowherd boy also. Like say for example, when we act in a particular drama, um, <clears throat> that time we may be playing the role of a villain or we may be playing the role of a devata we may be playing the role of a devotee. But whatever role we may be playing off, that mood we tend to take on. We tend to get into the character so that we can give the best in us. Like say for example, I know one time, um, one, one or two years ago, uh, those of uh, devotees who are friends with me on Facebook, um, might see this drama, Kali's Nightmare. I have a link that is uploaded there. <clears throat> it's a YouTube link of the Kali's Nightmare, you know, Kali Yuga's Nightmare. It's a very, very funny drama. This drama was actually uh, written in Bengali by His Holiness Lajapataka Swami Guru Maharaj. And... Uh, we did this drama here in Iskon Houston a couple years ago, and in that drama, my Prabhu has acted as Kali. So he was, he has acted as Kali Yuga, so he had to laugh like, you know, being the demon Kali. Um, so he had to laugh so viciously, he had to act that, you know, he has, you know, Adharma as his direct secretary, and then he had to have uh, intoxication, meat-eating, gambling, illicit sex as his agents. So he was interacting with them and talking to them in that language. So all of that, if anyone sees that drama, they will never be able to make out that those of you who know my Prabhu, well, it will be difficult to say that my Prabhu, as, when we see him as a devotee, and when you see him as Kali, he's a completely different person. He's a very different person. Because as soon as he wore on the costume of being Kali, he had to act like Kali. So that people who are watching him believe that yes, he is Kali. 
and that he would also have to give his best shot so that unless he believes it, he cannot act like Kali. So similarly, this text 177, a very natural thing has been said, that when Krishna appears as Vasudeva, who is the son of Devaki and Vasudev, his dress and consciousness are those of a Kshatriya or of a warrior. You see, that's the difference of mood in Dwarka or in Mathura and in Vrindavan. In Vrindavan, Krishna is in his original form. As he is dressing like a cowherd boy, he also acts like a cowherd boy. And he thinks himself to be a cowherd boy. But the same Krishna, when he appears as Vasudeva in Mathura or in Dwarka, at that time he wears the royal attire and he becomes like the prince and he becomes in the consciousness of a kshatriya, of a warrior. So there is a huge difference of, you know, in the personality as well. We can understand this even in our own lives. Not just, I gave the example of the drama, but say for example, that when we go out to the temple for a festival, we dress in a different way little more gorgeously but when we come back home we remove everything we wear on something light and as soon as we wear on something light we start feeling light that the consciousness comes that yes now it is time for me to take rest so whatever we are wearing is directly related to the activity that we are going to be performing when we go to work, we wear official dress. When we come home, we wear home dress. Why do we do such things? It is because <clears throat> the dress that we wear directly relates to the activity that we are going to be doing. So similarly, when Krishna, he is in Dwarka, he is dressing like a prince because he is the prince in Dwarka. But as the cowherd boy in Braj, Krishna is just completely in his own self. You know, he's got no inhibitions. He just feels so free, so liberated. Just like at home, when we come back to our own homes from an entire day of work, when we come home, we feel so relaxed. We feel that, okay, there's nobody here to judge me now. I can be my Nobody is looking at me. Nobody is, you know, seeing me for who I am. I can be what I want to be in my own home. So similarly, that is Krishna in Vrindavan. Krishna in his original self is a cowherd boy, a very naughty cowherd boy. Not just an ordinary cowherd boy. He is very naughty. And because he thinks of himself to be a cowherd boy at that time, Krishna does not think that I am the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He in fact goes around playing with his boyfriends, he cheats them, he gets cheated sometimes, and when he gets cheated, when he loses, he has to carry the other cowherd boy on his shoulder to take the punishment, will God ever do such a thing? Can we ever imagine Lord Vishnu or Narayan to accept any kind of punishment? It's impossible. But they are the same person. Govinda, Krishna, and Narayan, they are the same person. There's the only difference of the mood. As Narayan, he is official. He is formal. Krishna in office manifests as Narayan. Krishna at home is Kanha in Vrindavan. That's how he is. So this is what is trying to be explained in text 178. That when one compares the beauty, the opulence, the sweetness, 
and the intellectual pastimes of Vasudeva, the warrior, when you compare it with Krishna, the beautiful cowherd boy, the beautiful son of Nanda Maharaj, one can see that Krishna's attributes are much more pleasant. Obviously, because <clears throat> in an official capacity, there are a lot of limitations. One cannot interact freely when one is in an official or a formal relationship. But when one becomes informal, then formal formality is included in the informality as well. Everything is included in an informal uh, setting. Even formality is included in an informal setting. That is the beauty, beauty of an informal setting. So Krishna in Vrindavan, his beauty, his opulences, his sweetness, and his intellectual pastimes are beyond comparison. You know, the, these four qualities, Rupa Madhuri, Leela Madhuri, Vaini Madhuri, and Bhakta Parideshtita. That these four qualities are what actually complete the Supreme Personality of Godhead, which these four are, are lacking in the form of Lord Vishnu. The four-handed form of Krishna lacks these four qualities of Venu Madhava, sorry, Venu uh, Madhuri, Leela Madhuri, Rupa Madhuri, and Bhakta Parivesh. Venu Madhuri means that Krishna is the only one who plays the beautiful Venu, the flute. Rupa Madhuri, his beauty is incomparable. Leela Madhuri, his pastimes are unlimited. The kind of pastimes that Krishna comes up with every moment is unmatched with. But in Vaikuntha, the same things are getting repeated. There's nothing new that is happening in Vaikuntha. But in Goloka Vrindavan, every day is different. Every moment is different. There is no repetition of any activity. There is so much variety. So that is Leela Madhuri. Unlimited pastimes. The performer of unlimited pastimes. There's no limit to his pastimes. And Bhakta Pariveshtita, that he's surrounded by his loving devotees. So that is the distinction between Krishna, the two-handed form of Krishna, and the four-handed form of Krishna. And here in text 179, a very beautiful comment is made that Vasudev is actually agitated to see the sweetness of Govinda and a transcendental greed awakens in him to enjoy that sweetness. This is a very, con you know, confidential secret that has been revealed here. You see, we can understand this when we try to even relate it to our own lives. Which of our personalities do we like most? Or which one of us um, like our personalities, do we like our personality when we are at work or do we prefer to be the personality when we are at home? Don't we envy, you know, oh, when I go home, I'm so relaxed. I wish I could be this relaxed entire 24 by 7. I did not have to go through this austerity of going to work every day, doing this, doing that, all these chores. I don't want to do all of that. I envy and I really want, I aspire to just be home and do nothing else. We think like that sometimes. So this is what is said here, that Vasudeva, the four-handed form of the Lord, is actually envying the two-handed form of Govinda, thinking that wish I could have the life of Govinda rather than being in my own position as Vasudeva. Because that is very official. There are rules and regulations that need to be followed. But whereas in the life of Govinda, 
There is no rules and regulations. Everything is free. Everything is just, it's just happening at the desire of Govinda. Whatever he is desiring, that is happening. So like this, there is a transcendental greed that awakens in the heart of Vasudeva so that he could become like Govinda at all times. Very beautiful, very sweet uh, comment that is made here in text 179. And text 180, this is a verse that is quoted from Lalita Madhava. And here um, it is said that Vasudev and Dwarka, you know, most of us might have seen this very beautiful painting that Krishna is actually looking at his own reflection in one of the tiles because the tiles, um, the floor of Dwarka was like, it was made of out of, you know, um, ivory glass. So it was very, very shiny. You know, you could see your own reflection. And they were shiny. And they were, you know, you could, they were like mirrors almost made with these precious gems. So you could really see your own reflection. So one day, Krishna just came out of his room, and then he saw his own reflection. And then Krishna started talking. He just sat down, and he started admiring that person, that who is this beautiful person here? You know, and Krishna started looking, looking, and wherever Krishna's head would move, even the reflection's head would move, because that is Krishna himself. But Krishna was getting attracted to himself. You know, there's a very beautiful painting that um, enacts this pastime where Krishna is looking at his own reflection. Very, very beautiful painting. And um, so this is that exact verse which this painting is talking about, that Krishna is mesmerized by his own beauty. You know, Vasudeva, Actually, Vasudeva is thinking, the four-handed form of Krishna, he is thinking of the beauty and the attractiveness of Govinda. So he is, um, it, it's get, just getting, you know, whenever Krishna sees his own reflection, he explains that my heart becomes greatly excited and I long for such pastimes and desire a form exactly like that of the damsels of Raja. Because Krishna, whenever this Govinda Krishna, he appears, he appears not only himself, but he appears with his dear devotees. Bhakta Pariveshtita, which is the fourth quality of Krishna, that he is always surrounded by loving devotees. And the topmost devotees of Krishna are the, Brajba, the Brajavadhus, the damsels, of Braj. So when Krishna is seeing his own reflection in the floor, he is actually not just seeing himself, but he also sees the Brajabadhus. He also sees the damsels of Vrindavan. And he wishes that let me also have a form like these damsels of Raja so that I can also love that personality, that they have so much love for that personality. I wish I was one of those girls so that I could also have that same love for that personality. So very, very beautifully explained here in Lalita Madhava. And Mahaprabhu is quoting this to Shla Sanatan Goswami. So very beautiful verses that uh, we read today. Very sweet nectarian verses. And um, the rest of the chapter is also something, it, more sweetness is yet to come. So today we'll end here. If there's any questions, comments, or reflections, we can take that now. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Kala Mataji. First of all, uh, thank you so much. Uh, it was such a crisp and beautiful class to the point, explaining the words, so beautiful, so beautiful, so many insights with examples. Uh, I think I'm very happy that actually you gave the class for these two verses. It is so beautiful. 
and uh, thank you so much mata ji uh, i also liked one point that you were mentioning when krishna was saying his own reflection he was reminded of the two arm from Krish- i mean the vrindavan krishna sorry mm-hmm. and also the devotees the gopis mm-hmm. and uh, and he was also thinking of you know how nice the gopis are so thank you mata ji it was a very very beautiful class hari krishna thank you thank you hari krishna mata ji and that's na shapraf and guru maharaj very okay. very beautiful class mataji so many <laughs> wonderful points um i had a question mataji yes 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 very much please um i was just thinking that um uh, shri satan goswami um so he did he uh, did, did he uh, i mean has anything with brahat bhagavata amrita i was not too sure if um um did he write bahad bhagavata amrita or bahad bhagavata is part of lalita madhava bahad bhagavata amrita is a separate book in itself uh-huh. and uh, yes he is the writer so yes amongst but i took the name of hari bhakti vilas only uh, amongst some of the other major works that he has written because hari bhakti vilas is you know like the basic of our this the foundation of our uh devotional practices basically so yes but bhagavad bhagavata amrita also but it's not a part it's a book in itself in different volumes that okay. are and hari bhakti vilas says how many books mataji hari bhakti vilas actually what sanatan goswami wrote is one book and it's huge it's oh. huge um you know and uh, nowadays to find one compilation uh, you know this entire book in one compilation is next to impossible um it's actually preserved in different parts you know in bengali language it has been preserved um we have an english english version of hari bhakti vilas well what we have is what proper is just translated from there you know oh. the relevant parts of it okay is it is it available to uh, purchase mataji through vbt i am not sure i've never come across oh. it but i've never inquired because what i re- Uh, you know these books even lalita madhava or you know uh, even brihad bhagavata amrita for that matter um i'm very careful in not this, this is just me you know this is just my nature that i like to stick to shla prabhupad and um books that are written by um you know like just a few of his disciples i generally stick to that but mostly my study scope is just proper's books and whatever quotations are there in proper's books i just you know i like to be satisfied and just that um sure, sure. so but i have that's not i have never found the necessity to inquire if hari bhakti vilas is a, a production in itself because i personally haven't had the need to inquire into that but you're free to look into it i've i've never personally looked into it yeah no no i i have no <laughs> what do i hear is from you mataji <laughs> no because I, i'm just saying it just very frankly you know i've never um you know really read these literature separately you know it's just what i've read from read okay, it through I mean, so you want to follow your footsteps <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. We are just. No, my my question was, I was just thinking there's so much available, and mm. I just want to plan, um, you know, reading, reading at least once uh, whatever is important. And uh, so yes. I understand that Bhagavad Gita and Shrimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitam. Yes. Three books. Yes. If you are able to reread, reread, I think that's good. <laughs> yes, absolutely, absolutely. Oh. Thank you, Mataji. So, so nice to hear you all the time. Yeah. Thank you. It's wonderful to hear you, too. Wonderful to hear you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. <coughs> Hare Krishna, Karasudha Mataji. Dhanvat Pranam, Kuti Kuri, Dhanvat Pranam to your Seva, Hari Vol, Shila Prabhupada, Shila Guru Deo Ki Jai. Please give your association regularly, Hari Vol. Hari Vol, Jai. Govinda 
I had heard, and I, I can't remember when or where, that this is that during the Govardhan Leela is when Krishna got this name Govinda. Mm-hmm. Is that true? And if that if that is, then when did that happen? And um, when did the Brahma Samhita be chanted, or was that mm-hmm. just different yogas? And is <clears throat> that just kind of a unnecessary very question? <laughs> very appropriate question. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, uh, Govinda is the name that was given by Indra. Indra coronated Krishna with this name Govinda. and But it's not that Krishna didn't have this name before. He did. Um, uh, you know, it, it's just that in, in this particular, um, in Dwapa Yuga, let's say, that would let let me put it this way that in Dwapar Yuga for the first time in this Bhoma Leela of Krishna uh, Indra was the one who gave this name officially to Krishna he coronated Krishna with this name Govinda which means the one who gives pleasure to the cows and to the senses that's what Govinda means and um, so yes it was given uh, by Indra to Krishna uh, during, uh, I mean, after Govardhan Lila and uh, at Govinda Kund in Govardhan. And uh, as I said, so this name, it is an eternal name of Krishna, just like how Madhusudana is an eternal name of Krishna, uh, how Keshava is an eternal name of Krishna. But in this Bhoma Lila, Krishna manifests these eternal names of his through different pastimes. Does that make sense? Uh, yes, Mataji. Actually, it makes very good sense. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice question, though. Very nice question. You know, in the spiritual world, when because, you know, when Krishna kills the Keshi demon, he is called as Keshava. When he killed the demon named Madhu, he became Madhusudana. But in the spiritual world, uh, when Krishna has these eternal names, they have a different meaning also. Because in the spiritual world, when Krishna got these names, he didn't kill any demons to get these names. Right. Right. Right, because there's no killing of demons in the there's spiritual no world. There's no killing of demons in the spiritual world. So how did Krishna get the name Madhusudana? That's because um, Madhu in uh, Sanskrit also means the honeybee. Right. So Krishna got this name as the honeybee by Radharani. Radharani named him Madhusudana because Krishna is just like that honeybee who goes from different flower to different flower. He goes from one gopi to the other to the other to the other, not satisfied with even one. But when he comes to Srimati Radharani, he tends to stay for longer with her and completely satisfied with her. So that's why, you know, Madhu Sudhana means uh, when this, she calls Krishna as Madhu, and when he comes to her, he becomes Sudhana, means he becomes captivated by her. So that is why she has named him Madhu Sudhana. That is the meaning. Keshava. Of course, in this world, he is called as Keshava because he killed the demon Keshi. But Keshava, in the spiritual world, Krishna got this name because he is the one who can expertly tie up Radharani's hair. He is, you know, it is said that the only expert person, he is the most expert in uh, combing Srimadhi Radharani's Kesh you know, in braiding her kesha, in braiding her uh, hair with different flowers, with different ornaments. So he's very expert in that art. So the gopis have given him the name Keshava because he is most expert in handling Srimati Radharani's kesha. So that is why he's called Keshava. So like this, in spiritual sense, Krishna has different meanings to his name in the eternal sense. And in the Bhoma Leela, he has um, the same names, but when they manifest with different pastimes, they come out, you know, in different, um, 
different contexts. Thank you so much, Mataji. That is wonderful. I, I didn't realize I had that question in my head before, but, but I realize now that I was thinking that same thing. Thank you so much for answering more. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Very nice, very nice question. Mataji, I have one more question. Can I ask? Yes, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> no, in the spiritual world, right? So I was just mm-hmm. thinking that, uh, does that um, also mean, I mean, when I was just listening to the lecture for um, um, Nashinga Chaturdashi, uh, where um, Maharaj was mentioning about, uh, you know, when he, when he takes the intestines off, Hiranikashipu, it mm-hmm. is all the anarthas that he is taking out, mm-hmm. you know, envy, illusion, pride. Mm-hmm. So, um, so in, in that sense, um, is, is there a connection between each of the demon and um, some kind of a... Uh, oh, yes. Oh. oh, yes, absolutely. Oh, yes. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur has actually compiled a book on each and every demon that Krishna killed and what anasa that corresponds to. Like Putana is the art of, you know, um, um, chalna. Chalna matlab um, to you know, uh, cheat, the propensity to cheat is um, the anartha that if you listen to the pastime of Krishna um, delivering putana, the tendency that we have to cheat others, that that is subdued, that is uprooted. So different, you know, um, pastime of Krishna killing different demons, they correspond to a particular na- particular anartha, and this is a book that has been written by Shula Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Oh, wow. Yes. Do, do you have any access to it, Mataji? So I, I, I would read Yes, it. yes, there is. Actually, I have a soft copy of it. Um, oh, okay. I think, um, I'm not sure what the name is. Um, I don't remember the name of the book. Sorry, um, Mm, I think it's called the, um, you know, I, I can, I'll just look into it, what I have, and I will, um, I'll send, I'll send a link in the group. That would be great, Mataji. Yeah, because I was just thinking, trying to connect the lecture and what you were saying. I just felt that, uh, like in, in spiritual world, there is no anarthas, so mm-hmm. there are no demons. So... Right. Um, and I was also listening to uh, Urmila Mataji's uh, class on uh, lust becoming um, love. Mm. You know, she's saying that um, the the Ramayana story of uh, Krishna, I mean, Rama taking, I mean, uh, Rama and Sita, they're together, but Ravana takes Sita away. And, um, you know, so we want to enjoy the pleasure giving potency ourselves, um, but when we put it back together, when we put Hari and Krishna back together, we're putting Radharani and Krishna back. We feel so much happiness. So yes. just trying to connect all these things that have been... Yes, yes. Yes, Shri Bhaktivinoda Thakur has given each and every demon that Krishna has killed and what anartha they correspond to. Give me a minute. I'll actually look into it right now and I'll tell you. Anyone has any more questions in the meantime can ask? Uh, can I add to that? What? Yes, please. So, uh, based on that book, uh, there are a couple of seminars available by Bhakti Chaitanya Maharaj and I think Kamal Krishna Maharaj, but it's called Demons and Rindavan Leela, um, pretty much elaborates the entire book. So, if someone wants to listen. Um, yeah, maybe you can forward the link. Sure, Mataji. Yeah, thank you, Mataji. Yeah, I'll, I'll wait to hear from you, Kalasada Mataji. Thank you yes, so much. Yes, yes. Um, I, also, I also wanted to add that uh, there is also a children's, I guess, version or something. I think it's through Chaupati. Um, I looked it up, and I, and I will try to share that link also, where it has little worksheets with the story and some little questions for children. So I thought that was very helpful for just in a Thank you. Thank you, Mataji. Yeah, thank you, Pranayashwari, Mataji. I mean, maybe you could send that as well. Thank you. If you
if it's books like actually, that, you're actually it. in Iskon Desire Tree, there is one. Um, there's just a blog post that has. Um, oh, okay. Bhaktivinoda Thakur in his Sri Chaitanya Shikshamrita describes the demons killed by Krishna in his Vrindavan pastimes and Anarthas that they represent. So, yes, it's the book, the Sri Chaitanya Shikshamrita. Chaitanya Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Okay, okay. Thank you, Mataji. So, Mataji, could you send me the soft copy what you have? I will also look for more. Yeah, yeah. And I'll just send this to you. I Actually, I'll just send this um, this link on um, from Iskon Desire Tree. I'll just send that to, uh, you know, the group. So you can all take a look at that. That has like a... Is this the 21, you know, demons that Krishna killed? And what on earth has they represent? So the book has more details to it, but, you know, the bottom line is the same, actually. So you can take a look at that. Perfect, Masaji. Perfect. This is like dream come true for me, because I was thinking for Sunday school we wanted something that was, um, you know, to increase, uh, to help in their attitude management mm. for all the kids. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm just thinking the stories and getting to know how to take away the tanarsa will be very great. Yeah, thank you, Mataji. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, these these will be like you know very nice moral stories for the children. Yeah, anything thought through stories is like so easy. I mean, just for us as well. So you know. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. So I'm just sending this link over to the Bhakti Sangha group. Okay, any more questions? Thank you. Thank you so much, Mataji. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Mataji, Bandhat Pranam, Mataji, Krishna, Prabhupada. Thank you so much. for a beautiful and wonderful class. Yeah, Kishida Sundari, Mataji, Hare Hare. Krishna, Mataji, I just can't stop myself to appreciate your wonderful class. So thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Bobo. Thank you. Hi Krishna, Mataji. Yes, Hi. another wonderful class. And I do have a couple of questions. Yes, um, please. Just to follow up with um, your explanation of the Vrindavan Madhu Sudhana, I understood that, you know, there he's called Madhu Sudhana because, you know, unlike the normal bees that go flitting from flower to flower, Krishna doesn't do that because he is so satisfied when he rests upon Radharani. So this explanation made me wonder, what does the Sudhana part of that name mean in that context? Uh, Sudhana means captivated. <clears throat> when this oh. bumblebee like Krishna gets captivated by the love of Srimati Radharani, <clears throat> he gets attracted by her and stays with her. So that's why the Sudhana basically means to captivate. So Radharani captivates Krishna with her pure love. But in Bauma Leela, the Sudhana, does it mean a similar thing? In the, no, it means the slayer. So, so the Sudhana means two different things then, depending yes. upon... The context. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. Sanskrit. You know, Sanskrit, when it is used in different contexts, it has different meanings. Aha. Uh-huh. Okay, nice. And um, also, you know, when you were describing the, you know, Krishna's unique four qualities, you know, mm-hmm. Venu, you know, and so on, mm-hmm. um, the one where, one of his unique qualities is his, um, his relationships with the residents of Vrindavan. Yes. So that particular one is called what, Madhurya? Oh, that's the last one, that Krishna is surrounded by his loving devotees, mm-hmm. which is called Bhakta Parivreshtita. Madhurya. No, no. It's it's not Madhurya. It's just called Bhakta Parivreshtita. The other three are Madhuris, 
venu madhuri leela madhuri and rupa madhuri and the last one which is krishna surrounded by his loving devotees it is called as bhakta parivestita parivestita yes vestita yes oh i thought that there was four madhuryas no 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 there's three madhuris okay. Uh-huh. three madhuris and um this the last uh-huh. yes okay also pardon me hare krishna kala sudha mata ji hare krishna mata ji oh hare krishna i'm so sorry yeah i i pressed oh. the wrong button on my phone and i got disconnected from you can i just finish that last question please Yes, yes, please. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, so in the same connection um you were speaking of you were making the contrast between Vishnu's pastimes and Krishna's pastimes saying that um you know Krishna's pastimes are unlimited whereas Vishnu's they're limited in the sense that they they keep i guess repeating mhm they're yeah. not new so I, i was surprised to hear this because well for one thing i've understood it in a different way in the past you know my understanding of the contrast between the leelas of krishna and the leelas of vishnu are in terms of intimacy you know since there's there's this kevala prema only exists in vrindavan you know where you know the the level of intimacy you know i mean say there's the past time there's no past times of you know lovers and and um friendship you know anything beyond servitude in by kunta you know so that so those types of intimate relationships aren't there and so when we speak of that leela madhuri you know in krishna's past times my understanding is that it refers to the fact that only krishna has such intimate past times where as vishnu's vishnu does not have you know Narayan does not have such intimacy so so that was one that, that's one part of my question and the other part is that you know the the thought the, the conception of of Vishnu's past lives being limited um makes me wonder because Vishnu he's still the unlimited god you know and so why why wouldn't vishnu be able to also have unlimited variety um or unlimited pastimes that don't keep repeating you know why well, why should mm-hmm. okay very nice question but the reason why he cannot have um you know unlimited pastimes like krishna is because he does not have unlimited relationships like krishna krishna yeah, I know, but but still within within his realm of relationships of you know servitude and 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 you know maybe below mm-hmm. why within, why not within those relationships can they not be unlimited well because if if that's not called unlimited then right because if it if something has to be just by definition something can be called unlimited if it is actually unlimited that it is fitting in all the categories and then you are just going unlimited but if you are just having it restricted to only two categories and you say that mm-hmm. there is unlimited that's really not unlimited in that sense okay that's true yeah right so that's yes. how it is that in that sense it's not unlimited because mm-hmm. the relationships are limited so mm-hmm. therefore there has to be limited past times right but the past times themselves within those within that limitation is probably not limited 
Well, um, what I meant by saying limited is that they actually happen on a repetitive basis. It's not, um, you know, like Lord Vishnu, you know, in Vaikuntha, he has a set things, set um, course of action that is always going on. There is nothing that goes beyond the rules and regulations in Vaikuntha. That's Everything follows the system, you know? That's what you there mean, is a that system is. that goes on in the workings of Vaikuntha, but in Goloka Vrindavan, there's nothing called a system. Everything is, you know, uh, is just dependent on the desire of Krishna. Mm -hmm. But in Vaikuntha, Vaikuntha here, Mahaprabhu said it very clearly in the verses that we read today, that even, you know, this Vaikuntha Narayan, he is, you know, having transcendental greed for the Govinda and Goloka. Why will there be greed? If that Narayan is satisfied, if Vishnu is satisfied that there is so much of plenty of activities without, you know, any repetition that is happening over there, why would there be transcendental greed? Mm -hmm. Right. So, in yeah. that sense, in that sense, there is. Um, that's why I use the word limited activities because there in Vaikuntha, everything is happening like, you know, um, it's a set way of things to just go on like clockwork. It's happening, and no one can work, you know, outside of that framework. Mm -hmm. You see. So everything is. Um, you know, bound by the, you know, framework. But in Goloka, the rules, right? nothing, yeah, there's rules and regulations that need to be done. Like Lord Nishingadev's planet. Lord Nishingadev is eternally present over there, but what is he doing? He's having just, you know, sweet pastimes with Prahlad Maharaj, and that pastime is just keeping on repeating. That's it. Lord Ram in Ayodhya, he's just leading, you know, a beautiful Ram Rajya. The Ayodhya planet, Ayodhya Vaikuntha planet is just Lord Ram with Lakshman, Mother Sita, and they're just having, you know, the Ayodhya Vasis, they're just nice subjects, you know, Vaikuntha planet, they're all there in Ayodhya, very happy, but they're limited to that, within that framework. So in that sense, it is limited. And within that framework, on a, on an eternal basis, you won't see any kind of variety of pastimes? No, you won't see any variety of pastimes. And that is true for all of the Vaikuntha planets? Yes, that's true for all of the Vaikuntha planets. That is the um, thing... You know, let me tell you one more thing. This was actually revealed to us by Shla Jaipataka Maharaj. He said, <clears throat> he said that the Vaikuntha planets, they all happen, you know, this is his word that he used. He said that everything happens with clockwork. It, it you know, it all is time-bound. You know, it goes on a repetitive, like a cycle. Everything is going on. And in Goloka Vrindavan, Krishna is there, he is just enjoying every day is something different. Every day is something different. It's mm -hmm. not the same kind of activity every day at all. Every day is a different activity. It's a new day. It's, you know, sometimes it's night for days together. It's sometimes it's, you know, sunlight for days together. However Krishna wants it to be. That's how it is. But one corner of the spiritual world of Goloka Vrindavan, the topmost corner of Goloka Vrindavan, is a very special abode called Shweta Dvipa, where Lord Chaitanya resides eternally. And Lord Chaitanya's Sankirtan party resides eternally. So the nature of each of these spiritual worlds is that if you are in any Vaikuntha planet, you will be not allowed to enter into any other Vaikuntha planet. There's no um, travel, interplanetary travel that can be allowed. Even if you're in Goloka Vrindavan, you don't have to, I mean, 
Goloka Vrindavan, everyone's just so satisfied with Krishna that they're so engaged with Krishna that they don't even have time to think of any Vaikuntha planets. In Vaikuntha planets, although they have the opportunity to think about Goloka Vrindavan, but they cannot go. They don't have the access to go to Goloka Vrindavan. But when we are with Lord Chaitanya in Shweta Dvipa, Lord Chaitanya takes out his Harinam Sankirtan party every single day. And one day Lord Chaitanya decides to go to Nishinga Dev's planet. So the Harinam Sankirtan party led by Mahaprabhu Bhai Nitai will go to visit Nishinga Dev in his Vaikuntha planet. Then we'll come back again in the evening. We'll come back to Shweta Dvipa. Then the next day, we decide to go to see Ram Rajya. We like to go to Ayodhya Vaikuntha. Let's go to Ayodhya. So we go there. Another day, we decide, okay, let's go and see what Krishna is doing, the way he is, you know, stealing butter. Let's go and see Krishna's enjoyment with the gopas. So Mahaprabhu takes his Sankirtan party to Goloka Vrindavan, to the part where Krishna is playing with his cowherd boyfriends. Some days he goes to see the rasa dance with the gopis, how the gopis are having a blissful time with Krishna. So like this, the the way that we can really, you know, this aspect of being with Lord Chaitanya was revealed by Mahaprabhu himself. Goloka Vrindavan was actually revealed by Lord Chaitanya himself because he came from there. The previous incarnations came from Vaikuntha, so they could not reveal anything beyond Vaikuntha. Krishna, when he came, he was so busy and occupied in just taking care of the activities and in his own Leela, he couldn't reveal anything about Goloka Vrindavan. So therefore, Krishna had to come back again as Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he is the one who opened the doors to Goloka Vrindavan. And that is the beauty of Srila Prabhupada, that he has given us the opportunity that just by simply chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra, following the four regulative principles, we can go back home, back to Godhead, to the abode of Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And by his mercy, we can then visit each of the Vaikuntha planets each day, different variety every day, and also go to Goloka Vrindavan and be with Lord Chaitanya. That you is know, so you know, you're saying that um, Lord Chaitanya takes his Sankirtan party to these other spiritual planets, let's say like that of Lord Nusinga Dave. I'm wondering if, if just like as, as Lord Chaitanya has done here on our planet, or I wonder if there are souls that he um, attracts from these other spiritual planets so that <laughs> they too can have a uh, more intimate relationship. Maybe. We don't know. That's a question that we might have to ask Srila Prabhupada. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it will be revealed to us when we maybe will see that happening. But it, it is a possibility. It is a possibility. Lord Chaitanya's mercy can attract anyone, you know. So... And you, um, okay. Yeah, and you spoke of Narayan's lolium, basically, to have that kind of relationship, mm-hmm. with, like the gopis, you know. Mm-hmm. And so is there a, a Leela? I mean, I know the pastime of Lord Chaitanya is there, but... That was Krishna's, I think, lolium. But do we is there a, a pastime where Narayan's lolium for this relationship was satisfied? To have was um, satisfied? No, no. Narayan's lolium was actually not satisfied, and that's why he's still having this transcendental greed. Mm. Mm. <laughs> oh, so. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, I never heard of Narayan having this. Yeah. Well, that's why Chaitanya Charitamrita is PhD. That's why Srila Prabhupada called it to be the PhD. It's not, it's not, um, you know, just any education. It is postgraduate study of Krishna consciousness. It's very, very high level, very esoteric. 
I mean, what we are studying, you know, like Lord Chaitanya, you know, how Srila Prabhupada gave this one simple example that if you have a $100 bill, $5, $1, $10, $15, $20, everything is included in that $100 bill. So it is like that with Lord Chaitanya. If you have Lord Chaitanya with you, then it's like having everything with you. You are part of everything. You're part of the entire creation. Because Mahaprabhu is, he is, you know, he is Chaitanya Avatari. He is the, you know, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. More merciful than Krishna because he is Radha and Krishna combined. That is the uniqueness of Mahaprabhu. Okay. Thank you mm-hmm. so very much. Thank you. Thank you. So sorry that the question answer session went pretty long, but I think it was very interesting. Mataji always brings out very wonderful points. We are very thankful to you, Mataji, for always bringing out very beautiful points for discussion. Well, you. you are the basis for whatever I'm asking. Without you, without your discussion, I would have nothing to ask. Oh, no, 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 no. So much. No, no. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions? Hare Krishna, Mataji, and what's pranam? Thank you so much for the beautiful class and all the beautiful points which were discussed afterwards. It's so inspiring that so many points which the thoughts even don't cross my mind and uh, I get knowledge about all those things. Thank you so much, Mataji. And to all the Vaishnavas who asked such beautiful questions. Special thanks to them. Thank you, Kishori. Thank you. All right. Um, if there's no more questions. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Hare Krishna, Komadiki Mataji. Hare Krishna. I just well, wanted to say that when uh, pastimes with the devotees, loving devotees of Krishna, it's called Lila Madhuri. So that's why the, the four Madhuris are there. Which one? What's it called? Lila Madhuri. Lila Madhuri is the one with the pastimes, that Krishna has unlimited pastimes. Yes. Yeah, which is the well, that's what I have heard. This mm. Lila Madhuri, Rupa Madhuri, Vera Madhuri, and uh, mm, what's the first one for? Rupa Madhuri, Vera Madhuri, Lila Madhuri, and uh, oh, I forgot. <laughs> no, the fourth one is Bhakta Pariveshtita. It There are three Madhuris and one Bhakta Pariveshtita. Yeah. But so. thank you. Thank you so much, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Wonderful nectar in class. Thank well, Katha, thank you. Class will be not so much. The word fitting is Katha, Krishna Katha. Thank you very much. Gaur Katha, Krishna Katha. Thank you very much, Mataji. Hare Komadiki Mataji. We always seek your blessings. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna Mataji, thank you so much Mataji. It's so pleasing to the ears and so pleasing to the heart to hear about the pastimes of Lord Krishna. So it's very rare, only I can hear from your lotus mouth that so many pastimes are happening like this. So it's so pleasing Mataji, thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Well, it's it's nothing to do with me. It's the you know sincerity with which you are listening. That is what is the magic. So, thank you.